Welcome to project two in Blender Filmmaking. We want to be able to key out a green screen, use that footage in a simple environment, and then do some basic modeling in this project. Go up to compositing and just delete all of the things. Uh, hit shift A and add an image. And let's open our green screen footage. Next, we'll add a keying node. That's the node that's going to do most of the work in uh, keying our green screen. Plug the image into the image, and then we're going to want a composite node. If you plug the image into there, then that is complete. That's the whole node setup. But we want to add a viewer so we can see what's going on. So we'll just put a viewer right there. Right away you can see where it's going to appear in the background. But if we plug image also into viewer, then we'll see what we're getting in our composite as well. And this is not what we want. The reason for that is because if you come down here to where it says key color, you can see that the key color is white. That's not good. We have a green screen. You wouldn't want to use white because uh, there's always white pixels on people and stuff that, you, that you're trying to green screen. So use a green screen or a blue screen. You can use the eyedropper here just to select the color of the green screen. And if you have a really good footage like this one is, then it's just that easy. You don't have to mess around with... Uh, a green screen background that has a bunch of black and white and shadows and different stuff on it, right? It's all one color. That's uh, how you know you've made or recorded a good green screen video, and that's the benefit. We don't have to mess around with our choices. All we have to mess around with here is the edge of this thing and how it looks. You can see it's kind of pixelated. So the defaults here, clip black zero, clip white one, those are good. And the rest of these settings as default are pretty decent. Our friends here are going to be dilate erode. Let's see what minus one does. So dilate a road means it takes one pixel off of the edge of everything. Let's do two and see how that looks. Not too bad. And then let's, uh, let's do feather distance of negative two. Let's see if we can tell the difference with negative four. We don't want to take too much away from the footage. You can hold, so to, uh, to zoom out on your viewer in the background there is V. To zoom in is Alt V. And if you hold Alt and middle click, you can drag that footage around. So, uh, dilate a road of negative two, feather distance of negative four is giving us a nice, soft, but clean edge. I can see just a little bit of green here, maybe, but if you have anything in the background, you're not going to see that as a problem. Back over in the image, you're going to want to know how many frames you want to use. You can figure that out by looking at the details of the file to see uh, the file length and then the frames per second. For us, uh, this is a 30 frame per second file. We want to go over here to output the, I guess it's technically the third one of these, I always say the second, but make sure our output is 30 frames per second as well. And then we want to output 300 frames because we want to make a 30 frame per second video that's 10 seconds long. So that's great. We have it set to 1920 by 1080, which is you know, standard HD that we want to use and great. So that should be good. You can use the, uh, the blue handlebar down here to move through the video just to make sure that your settings uh, haven't made any frames bad. So like if you have kind of a poorly lit green screen video, you might see that some patches and spots are see-through on your person because of the way that the light spill might be reflecting back on them or something like that. This one we're good. So we're going to output that. What we're going to do, we're going to output this. Uh, you could output it as a TIFF as an uncompressed TIFF, that would give you a great high quality RGBA image. RGB is red, green, and blue. That's what makes up a picture. And then the A is all the clear parts, the alpha. So we need a file type that will give us RGBA. For our purposes, we may move some files around. I'm gonna bring these files to, uh, to, the, to the classroom. So I'm gonna make a smaller file type. It may not be as much of uh, the quality. However, we don't need the quality of that level for this project. So I'll make a PNG and I'll let the compression be at 15%. That's gonna make a much, much smaller file type and a folder, of, a folder size overall. The last thing is to set your output folder. So go over here to output. Make sure you have 30 frames per second. You have it set to the number of frames you want the video length to be. All right, so let's select a folder that works for you where you want to output this. Select your folder. And then down here in this bar, in the file name bar, uh, the frames will be named with a number, right? Each frame will be given a number. But for each of these videos that you green screen, you want to put something here. 
because you don't want uh, to have multiple videos like this that have exactly the same file names. So give it a unique identifier. I just put VR for this one. What that will do is the first frame will be VR0001. That will help Blender identify it. Blender will rename the materials or will create a new material name for a video that's being brought in. You don't want those videos to have the same material name or Blender will get confused and make them be the same video. Once you've done that, just come up here and hit Render Animation and Blender will start spitting out those files as frames into the folder you've selected. When you're done with that, you're ready to move on to the next part of this project. Now in a new Blender file, we're going to add in those image sequences that we just made. So images as planes, find your file. Within the file, hit A for all, hit animate image sequences, and for now just leave it on principled. We may add some emission later. You have to be in a rendered view to see it. That's up here in the top right. You can rotate it by hitting R, X, 90. As beginners, we're going to go over here to the second area here, the setup, what is it? Render properties. And uh, we're going to switch to EV. It's a faster engine that's going to be just fine for our purposes. Let's raise this up. So GZ, put it above the, uh, the floor there. I'm going to bring my 3D cursor back here. So shift, right click, and add my background image. So shift A, image, images as planes, and look for my background image. For this project, you're welcome to select a different background image from mine. You can use whatever one that you want, that you find somewhere. Just bring it in. Make sure that it is a view of something because we're going to make a little window here. Uh, first, let's go ahead and add a light over here. So um, let's add a sun maybe. Now for our footage of the, the gamer, let's go to material properties and scroll all the way down. Put our shadow on alpha hashed. And now let's just create the window. So between the background and the figure, we're going to shift right click and move our 3D cursor. And we're going to add a plane. So shift A, mesh, plane, RX90. And let's scale it up. Grab Z, GZ, grab GX. So we have a wall. And uh, the last thing we need is a camera. So if I hit shift over there, shift right click, shift A, camera and I go into the camera view I can zoom in until I'm happy with how close I am and then hit N go to view and camera to view that means when I move this around now I can I can stay in the camera when I move my mouse so now we can see exactly what we're gonna get in our shot here so this video doesn't have anything below the thigh so we're going to zoom in far enough that um, that that's off screen, it's off camera. But let's look at our camera rotation. Click on the camera up here and go to item. And let's zero that out at 90. And both of those are zero. And that gets us right in the middle. So let's move, uh, let's move back a little bit away from our figure, great. And uh, let's just scale her up until, until she's safely off the edge. This red border is the camera border. And so the footage is below that. So now we want to put a window in this uh, in this uh, this wall here. And the way that we're going to do that is very very simple. We're going to hit Tab to go to edit mode. We have this face selected. Let's hit three for face, or you can come up here where it's vertex edge face. And uh, I'm going to hit I to inset. So I can inset that as far as I want to get a window. I'm going to do the outer bit, so that'll be the start of the frame of the window. And I'm going to hit E to extrude. So if you have a face like this, E, extrude, and you can bring it forward and get the thickness of the window and the window trim. Then if I hit I again, I can inset it to, uh, to find the inside you know, dimensions. Then I can extrude, so hit E, to go back. I can go thicker as if uh, there's thickness past the wall as well. Now, if I just uh, delete that face, so X, and then a little menu pops up and hit faces, then we have a window. So that's not too bad. Let's look at it in the camera. So far, so good. Uh, we need to move this up a bit. Maybe need to scale it down. But uh, we can hit GZ and move it up. Let's scale the whole thing on the Z axis. There we go. 
Now, out of the camera view, let's add some materials to this thing. So for uh, the wall itself, uh, the wall and the window are one object, so we need to add two materials. So for the first one, we'll hit new. Let's just make it, uh, let's make it a color. Go classic wall color. <laughs> yeah, sure. And then, um, and then what we need to do is select the faces of the, the trim. So in order to select a, uh, a loop, so uh, faces that are near each other in a row or a column, you can hold Alt and then click near the edge and it will select them. So let's do that for the front of this frame, for the outer edge of this frame, and if you hit, if you hold Alt and Shift, you can select more than one loop. Great, so those should all be a different material because they are all part of the window frame. So let's go over here to the second material, hit New, and hit Assign with those faces selected. Now, that just became a different color. It's a new material, and we can so make it like a dark gray. Why not? We can use this button to turn off the overlays and just see what's going on. Let's make it a little lighter. Great. So, let's turn our overlays back on. In the camera view, this is not looking too bad. What we can see is that uh, everything's still a little dark. We can also see that on the video, this person was filmed with red light from one direction and blue, blue light from another. So let's add that in. Come out here, we'll go Shift A and add a spotlight. And we'll bring it up and R, Y until we kind of have what we want. Make sure that the light source is in the room as well. That's great. I'm going to move our background further back. And so we'll just make this a color. Light properties are here. We'll make it kind of red, like is in her. Well, this side wants to be blue. Here we go. And we'll, we're going to want to increase that brightness significantly. Yeah, that seems to have helped. Let's duplicate that. Move it on the x-axis. Rotate on the z, 180. And it's the same, but different. Now let's make that one. Let's make that one red. So we want these to hit her, sure, but also to hit the wall because the lighting that's hitting her should be hitting the wall around her as well. And so let's see what that looks like. Not too bad. I can see that for our lights, we're having a bit of a funny shadow here. Let's turn on contact shadows for each of those. Under shadows for each light, find contact shadows and click it. That'll clean up your shadows in EV. This is not looking too bad. I think what we should do is just put a little bit of a bump on the texture of the walls to make it look like it's a real place with some, some paint texture, or some plaster texture to it. So let's get out of the camera again and uh, we will we'll go to shading. Here in shading we can turn on rendered view and zoom in a little bit just to see what we're going to get. And uh, we, can, we can add a... So which, which texture do we have selected? The first one, the wall texture. Shift A, search for a bump. You can plug that right into the normal for now. And let's add a noise texture. So let's add, let's add a wave texture for plug the factor into the height. So that should do something, maybe. Yeah, it did. It gave us a super interesting wall texture. You know what? That's pretty awesome. Uh, it's not what I was going for, but I think we might just keep that. That's pretty sweet. What does that look like in the camera? Interesting. If I dial the strength down, what happens? Kind of just looks like a, this looks like a wallpaper. That's interesting. All right, cool. So for our um, for our window trim, let's do the same thing. So in material properties, we'll select the other material. Actually, let's go back. Let's select the bump and the wave texture, and hit Control C to copy, and then and Control V and just paste those right into this one as well. However, we don't want uh, the trim to have those same stripes. We want it to have a much more, much smaller texture. Last time we learned about uh, enabling an add-on, and we're going to enable another one now. Go to Edit, Preferences, Add-ons, and search for Node. And at the bottom you'll see Node Wrangler. Make sure that's checked. 
it lets you do all kinds of fun stuff with nodes. And this is, this is one of them. Control T will give you a mapping node for your wave texture. So what that will do, a lot of stuff, but go to Z for rotation, type in 90, and you have rotated this texture to be uh, the other way. Um, we can click and scroll over all of these and scale the texture way up. We have given ourselves a sort of a fine horizontal <laughs> rule there. It's an okay texture for this for now. Let's go back to our wall in layout. Let's look at the color. The beige is no longer working for me now that we got this wallpaper thing going on. Let's make that... Uh, Let's make it kind of gray, kind of blue. In, in material properties, uh, once you've added a material, you get this list of long <laughs> attributes right here. Uh, specular is how uh, much light it reflects, whereas roughness is how shiny it is. So something could be uh, you know, very reflective, but not very shiny, and um, it's kind of just diffuse. But if it's very shiny, and very reflective, then it's super, super shiny. But our noise texture is just completely dominating this, uh, this situation right here. Let's see if we can dial that down a little bit. Back in camera view, I'm going to hit F12 to do a render and see what we get. This is looking okay. And I want to brighten things up a bit because there's just too, just too much darkness. So I'm going to see if I can raise the lights. You know what I'll do? I'll put a little bit of emission on the video itself. Let's go to shading and uh, drag the color down to emission. And then we'll just make it 0.2. Let's see how that looks. I think I want to add a light that is out in front of the figure that's casting a shadow back on the window. All right, it doesn't need to be that bright. Maybe that will take care of our uh, of our lighting problem as well. So yeah, let's remove that emission now that we have that light. Cool. So our video surface, let's make sure it's not reflective because people would just not be reflective in the same way. We can turn the specular down. We can still keep a little, but uh, it would be rough. There'd be not much shininess. Put it around. Middle, middle roughness. Up here in render properties, go uh, all the way down to the bottom for color management. And uh, for view transform, select filmic. And then under the look, select medium high contrast. It's gonna make everything a little bit more contrasty, a little bit more natural, less foggy feeling. Let's select our background and raise the emission on that. See if we can get it feeling a little bit more lively back there. Yeah, let's go with something maybe like um, 0.6. I want to scale it up so I can uh, so I can turn the turn the camera as much as I want. And then for the beginning of the video, let's start over here. So I'm going to select the camera. I'm going to position it so that uh, the bottom of the footage still can't be seen. And with the camera selected and my mouse over the main window, I'm going to hit I and select location and rotation. That will add a keyframe. At the end of the video, I'm going to move the camera to where I want it to be there. And I will do the same thing. Now the camera will move while the video is playing. I think now we'll add some like sci-fi window window bars. So just move your 3D cursor over there, add a cube, scale it down significantly. Let's scale it up on the Z axis a lot. Great. 
scale, and then Shift Z will scale it on everything other than the Z axis. Cool. Let's uh, scale it a bit on the X axis. Rotate it on the Y axis. You can get that kind of thing going on. And let's scale it. So if you hit S for scale, and then tap Z and then Z again, it will scale it on its own local Z axis, which is what we kind of want here. You can do the same thing with grab. Grab Z, Z, you can move it on its own Z axis. That way we can use its own coordinates to kind of get it in the place that we, that we want it to be. Cool. I'm gonna Shift D to duplicate that. And I'm going to move it down, but I'm going to hit Shift Y so that I don't move it on the Y at all. That way it will stay in the same plane where it was. Now I can do scale on its own Z axis again. Grab and move it around. Now I have another window bar there. That's cool. Great. Let's add those on the bottom. Let's make all of those one object. That way we can just give them one material altogether. Let's give them that same, that same window material. How does that look? Kind of like, uh, kind of Miami cyberpunk. Great. There's one last thing that we'll do for this project. We'll add a volume cube. So click anywhere, add a cube, scale it up bigger than your whole scene. You can scale it down in height. You don't want to make it any bigger than it needs to be, but it needs to encompass everything. And for the material, go to Shading, select New, and just delete the, uh, the principled BSDF. Hit Shift A, search for a volume scatter node. Plug the volume directly into the volume. Make the density like 0.02. And the anisotropy, turn that up to 6 or 7 or 8. You know, 0 0.6, 0 0.7, 0 0.8. Cool. Now we have sort of a sort of a smoky thing going on that if I hit H or Alt H, you can see it wasn't it wasn't there before. Let's get out of the camera. Yeah. I'm gonna move the background uh, a little further away and make it bigger. That way there'll be more of that fog I just added between the background and the camera. Let's turn that uh, let's turn that fog up just a little bit. All right. Cool. Yeah, I scaled up that background too much. Let's change that. If you scale up your background too much, then you won't get any detail uh, from the picture. So the thing to do is to go to the end and see exactly how little you can get by with. Great. Cool, that looks good. So uh, now we want to render this out. Go to the third tab, Output, and uh, select a folder that's, that's right for you. Uh, come down here and we're going to output as frames. This is much, much better than outputting a video because we'll put the frames together as a video in a second. But if your process gets messed up or the program crashes or whatever, uh, you may have spent a lot of time rendering your frames. You might have gotten halfway. Well, you would be halfway done still, even if the program crashed if you did frames. Whereas if you start rendering a video, if it doesn't finish making that video, that video file might be corrupt. So let's select PNG, RGBA, Compression is fine for us. And if we just hit render and animation, so it will start spitting out these frames as individual image files. When that's done, come back and continue on. So the last thing we want to do is put those frames together into a video file now that they've rendered. Uh, in the beginning, go to video editing, or you can go to file, new, video editing file. The blue handlebar will tell you you're at the beginning. You can hit control T to remove those timestamps and just see the frame. We want to make the project be 300 frames long, 
So make sure you have that selected. And then down here, go to Shift A and add an image sequence. Now select those frames and hit Add Image Strip. The biggest only remaining hurdle is that this thing always starts with a frame rate of 24 frames per second, and that's just not good enough. Put it on 30 and push spacebar, you can see your final video. So now all you have to do is to output it. In Output, select the folder you want to output it to and select FFmpeg Video. Go to Encoding. For us, we're going to select MP4 and select High Quality. Uh, for audio, just select no audio. You can add audio on here if you wanted to. So you could just drag a song file right into here in the video editor and uh, line it up with where you wanted it to be relative to the video. And if you did that, then you could select uh, AAC or MP3 and, and have audio there. But we're going to have none for now. And that's it. Just hit render animation. And uh, much faster than the render, it will spit this out uh, as a final video file. That's it. Thank you very much, and I'll see you soon.